Good morning, everyone. I'm your host, Lauren Waters, and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful. In this episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful, we're attempting to tell the story of what it was like to be a student at CCHS in the historical year 2020. We're viewing this as our time capsule, a way to capture this moment that we are living in, which is not too far off from what some seniors at Clay Chalkful did 20 years ago in creating a real time capsule. Here's Julia Petty with the story. 20 years ago, the class of 2001 decided to make a time capsule encasing letters and special items that represented them and their senior year. If you've ever visited our school library prior to its renovation a few years ago, you may remember this time capsule sitting in the middle of the room with a glass case showing off some of the memorabilia. We got the chance to sit down with Courtney Garrett, the senior class president in 2001, to talk about how they came up with the idea for the time capsule and how her life has changed since then. My name is Courtney Garrett and I was Courtney New. N E W was my last name. Um, I was class president all four years, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year for the class of 2001. So I uh, am really familiar with who we are and, and what we were and kind of how we've dispersed today. So Courtney and her classmates, along with several of their teachers, began to make plans to memorialize the class of 2001 with a time capsule. The principal at the time, Lawrence Carter, was supportive of their efforts and helped them put their plans into action. He was our advocate, our friend, and he was a huge proponent of doing something for the class of 2001 above any other class that we were able to leave a mark. Um, because I think people wanted to remember who we were and what we did. We made sure that every group represented, such as Cougarettes or Color Guard of the time, everyone had um, some paraphernalia that was put into the time capsule to represent that um, kind of group that served the school in some way or another. So I think the most important thing that I put in there was my 17 slash 18 year old boys writing to my dear friends. Some of those people are with us now and some of them are not with us anymore. And they wrote to me. Um, and that's really powerful because we were a class that experienced such tragic loss with our student body over the course of 10 years. Um, those letters are really important because it's going to be a sound from somebody's voice that I didn't think I was going to get to hear. And so when you put it in that kind of perspective, you're like, wow, these aren't just letters. These are these are moments we can't get back. And um, so that was that's pretty powerful. So for me, the letters are the most important thing. The letters I'm going to receive and the letters that I wrote. Um, Courtney, if she had any advice for the class of 2021. Realize where you are and, and it's so hard. You feel like you're at the pinnacle of your life and there's so much more in store for you. And if you'll be gentle with yourself and gentle with your peers, you give grace to those um, that you don't really realize you need to give grace to, including yourself. So there are things that just you put yourself through the ringer on that you feel like everything hinges on this moment and you just need to be gentle. Just when you hit that mark, just take a breath, take a step back and realize you have another lifetime to live. And dare I say it, God has incredible things in store for you guys. Thank you, Courtney, for taking the time to talk to us. It's crazy to think about how much has changed in the last 20 years and even crazier to think about what the world may look like 20 years from now in 2041. This year's seniors, the class of 2021, will also have the chance to put their own items in the time capsule. We will be covering this developing story along with the official opening of the 2001 time capsule throughout the semester. So stay tuned for that coverage. Back to you, Lauren. Thank you for that advice, Courtney. The year 2020 has been devastating for many of us. The death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and hundreds of thousands of deaths due to COVID-19, and so many more. Adriana Colvin is here with more on the events that happened this year. Adriana? 2020 has been like no other year. Before we say goodbye to 2020, we wanted to take some time to look back on what made this year so historic. Here is our year in review. It all started with the rapid wildfires in Australia in January that had record-breaking temperatures and killed at least 33 people. 
Then on January 26, Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter crash. This shook the world in many ways because he was an inspiration to many and a legend both on and off the court. Then on March 13, the United States took action and went on lockdown due to the spread of the coronavirus. People across the country were asked to stay at home unless they performed an essential job, like working at a grocery store or caring for others at the hospital. Schools across the nation closed their doors and students quickly shifted to online learning. Everything was getting canceled, including the Olympics this past summer. The death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor sparked many protests across the country. This movement brought new light to racial injustice in our society. One major thing that didn't get canceled because of COVID was football this fall. This seemed to be the only good thing to come out of this year as we are still dealing with the coronavirus. Finally, in November, the presidential election happened. This year was not like any other year with a record number of voters and mail-in votes. It took days for the results to come in and Joe Biden was named president-elect and our first lady vice president Kamala Harris will take office in January. Overall, 2020 has been full of unexpected twists and will go down in history. The COVID-19 pandemic began in early 2020, and because of that, many activities were cut short for our students. In-person education ended on March 13th here at CCHS, a month before prom. Everyone is wondering, will prom happen this year? Franca Odari sat down with Mrs. Carter to ask her. Franca? Since early March, we have been in quarantine because of COVID. We can all say 2020 has started by being the most historic year ever. Schools around the world have been closed and it has impacted the students greatly. Major events have been put on hold because of the widespread of COVID. Events like graduation, honor society inductions, vacations, and even the AP exams. One of the major things COVID has impacted students was prom. Prom is what most high school juniors and seniors look forward to. So I interviewed a few students and a sponsor of the prom committee, Ms. Carter, to ask them how COVID affected prom for them. Hi, my name is Kinsley Carter and I am the prom sponsor. I think last year during quarantine it was a little bit stressful when we didn't quite have a decision on if prom would continue or if it would be canceled. So I think most of the just stress and uncertainty was in the moment of we didn't know what was going to happen. I think prom mostly effect, being canceled mostly affected the students and I think as teachers we were just sad for the students that they would miss out on that opportunity. Um, we did have to regroup by canceling the venue um, and kind of just getting refunds from all the vendors because at the point that um, the lockdown happened and quarantine went into place we already had everything planned so I think just Go, like checking all the boxes and making, making sure everything was covered and getting the refunds back to the students. That was just kind of all the paperwork part of it. But I think the hardest part was just having to tell the students that they wouldn't be able to have prom. Um, I was looking forward to going to prom with my date last year and he was a senior, but Corona kind of messed everything up. Personally, I wasn't hurt because I was there for prom, but I, I didn't really kind of didn't want to go. I mean, it was disappointing because like most of the stuff was already planned out and like stuff was already bought. So it was really a waste of money and it was disappointing. I think if we were unable to have prom again, um, we would try to look at our options. But really, most of those decisions are all out of our hands. Like last year, it was canceled because the whole state was shut down. It wasn't just Clay Chalkwell making that decision, but it, there's a lot of other factors that go into play. So. As teachers and school and staff, we don't really make those decisions. It kind of just comes down from the top. So we'll just have to see what rules are in place when prom happens this year. Many of you are unaware, as I was, that the 2019-2020 baseball season didn't even happen. Their season ended before it even started. More on that story, Michaela Dillard. Hi, Clay Charles. Well, this is Michaela Dillard from CCN TV. As you know, the year 2020 has been a really tough and a little weird, with many unforeseen circumstances always stumbling upon us. Many athletes have been affected by this year, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic shutting down many great opportunities for them. For example, our Cougar baseball team's season was canceled. They thought it would only be temporary, only to find out it was mandatory for all spring sports to be canceled, missing out on great opportunities to showcase their skills and get ready for a college season. We interviewed a few baseball players to get their input on the situation. Take a look. Hey, my name is Braxton Rose, and I'm a class of 2021. And my name is Kobe Lewis, class of 2021. So we started in August when we came back to school. We started working out. We started doing a little throwing program and stuff like that. Just really getting ready for the season, getting bigger, stronger, and faster. 
All right, so we was getting bigger and stronger. Then we started practicing after Christmas break. And we played a few games, maybe like a month worth of games. Not, not, not too big. When we came back from Christmas break, we was practicing from like three, I know, 150 to like five o'clock, four days a week. You know, we didn't practice on Fridays, but we was really getting our mind ready. And we had a pretty good team last year that I felt. And then when COVID hit, we was in the middle of like the season. Like we was like doing good. We was being teams. And then we was thinking to the beach. You know, of course that got canceled because of COVID. We was mad too. They canceled half our games. We canceled the rest of our season. And we was just thinking it was going to be short term. And then it just ended up canceling our whole season. I was looking for colleges. And it's kind of harder now because like other students that was already at the college get another year and it just add on and college coaches can only keep so many kids and it's just a big problem right now but you know we're just gonna work through it. I believe if COVID didn't happen like if it never would have got out of hand I believe like everybody like would have been committed like everybody. It'd be more opportunities. Yeah way more opportunities for higher level academic wise too so I believe I believe that we're gonna work through it this year. I don't I don't think it will be like as bad as last year. Since we're gonna have like since we've been playing baseball all summer, we work through it. So it really like we are like we know what to do now. So. Yeah, and I think like we've been playing all summer and like they really it really hadn't affected us out there. And you know, we're really really spread out in the field and stuff and I think we should have a season and go compete this year. Although the season was canceled earlier this year, we look forward to the upcoming season that's coming next year. Back to you, Lauren. High school is hard enough as it is without having to worry about a global pandemic. Mental health is just as important as physical health. Personally, I would like to say to all of you watching that you are not alone. Reach out and ask for help. Terry Jones is here with our counselors with a conversation about mental health. Terry? 2020 has been a very difficult year for many due to things like the pandemic, racial injustice, the election. I mean, the list goes on. So I want to know how these issues have affected the mental health of a couple of students. So I started off by asking what specific issues have affected the mental health of students. And here is what they said. COVID. I would definitely say for one, coronavirus, maybe even the presidential election. You, would, you weren't able to leave your house because of the whole corona thing, and you would pretty much spend the time alone with your family and not be able to have like human contact or anything. Next, I was curious to know what students already do to maintain good mental health. Pray. <laughs> I make sure that I get sleep, even if it's at weird times, because I know that I can't really focus on work without having sleep. As you can see, some issues in the world today have brought on some concerns among students. Now let's hear some tips on how to cope with mental health from CCHS counselor, Ms. Snowden. It's so important to be in tune with how you're feeling and to recognize if there's anything that um, that's upsetting you or whatnot and just to not let it bring you completely down. There was this whole research done about limiting your screen time um, and how that can have a negative effect if you spend too much time on the screen. Um, some other suggestions were to get outside, enjoy the sunshine, and to find positive things and gratitude and things to be grateful for. So trying to find things, um, positive things, because a lot of, like I said, with the news and lots of different things, there are so many negative things kind of coming at us. So it's important to find reasons to be happy, find the good in things. Thank you, Ms. Snowden, for those helpful tips on how to stay healthy. Many people may not realize it, but your mental health is very important. So if you are struggling, make sure that you are either seeking help or finding the best way to cope with it. Thank you, Terry. Moving on to the summer of 2020, our country endured a series of protests due to police brutality and the deaths that occurred at the hands of the police. These events caused many of our students to speak out on social media about the racism they've observed and endured in this country. Take a look. 
Summer 2020 had many big changes, especially after the death of George Floyd. Many protests broke out and a lot of people used social media to voice their opinions. I interviewed two students at Clay Chalkville to see how they use social media to talk about what has happened. Hi, I'm Kendall Watts and I'm a junior at CCHS. I use social media to spread awareness about social injustices by discussing topics brought up by other activists and influencers and researching the facts for myself to help better educate and inform those around me and giving my own opinion as well. Social media can help to advocate for racial injustices, but you should also research the facts on your own because sometimes they can be false. So it is better to look them up for yourself and read up on it. I have attended protests and I also sign petitions and encourage others to do so as well to help create change and hopefully make a difference. Some experiences that I've had are being generalized and stereotyped by those around me, um, being told I wasn't black enough or too black, um, being treated unfairly by teachers, and even once told that I wasn't going to be given the grade that I deserved because they just didn't want to. Um, one thing that I can say from these experiences is to keep going and to keep an open heart and show gratitude for what you do have. I also interviewed CCHS sophomore Tiffany Davis to see how she uses Snapchat and even her own clothing to voice her opinions on racial injustice. I use Snapchat as my platform to change the social injustice system with my fashion. With Snapchat, I can post pictures that has an emp empowering message that can uplift people and bring us all together. I was a part of Recycle Runway 2020. The theme was activism. I repurposed a denim jacket. I cut and sewed words from bold fabrics onto that denim jacket. My message was to empower black women. We're so proud of our students for standing up for what is right. One of Clay Chalkville's students, Gabby Kirk, participated in a protest this summer in downtown Birmingham. Simone is here with more on that. Simone? What's up, Clay Chalkville? This is Simone Smith, and on this episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkville, I spoke with CCHS own Gabby Kirk to get her insight on the BLM protest that took place this past year. My name is Gabby Kirk, and I'm a senior. Um, well, I'm a firm believer in um, putting action to your words. So I didn't feel like it was fair if I was just to be on like Facebook or Snapchat or Twitter and complain about what's going on in our society if I'm not going to do anything, especially considering that I was 17 and I turned 18 this year. So I'm old enough to actually kind of to go out and do um, my own thing or whatever. So I was like, well, when an opportunity arrives, I just jumped to it. Yeah, actually, um, the first protest I participated in was, I want to say, during the summer. It was either around the spring of 2019 or summer of 2019. During that time, Alabama was planning on passing a very restrictive abortion law that, um, I mean, it was extremely restrictive. And uh, me and my sister, we both decided to go down to Kelly Ingram Park because there was a protest there. So we actually, and I wouldn't necessarily say um, it was a, we didn't like march in the streets or anything. It was just kind of like a group gathering at Kelly Ingram and you had people out there speaking and about their experiences and stuff like that. So that was the first protest I went to. So the one that happened this year, it was nothing new to me. Thank you, Gabby, for giving us the opportunity to get her intake on the BLM protest. Let's hand it back over to Lauren. Thank you for that, Gabby. On a lighter note, one of our teachers has been recognized for being one of the best art teachers in the state of Alabama. We would like to recognize Mrs. Ashley Colwell. Jillian Johnson is here to tell us more about her award. Jillian? Hey, Clay Chalkville. This is Jillian Johnson with CCN TV. And today, I decided to sit down and do an interview with our art teacher, Mrs. Colwell. She recently just won Secondary Art Educator of the Year Award. So let's see what she has to say about that. I think it's really exciting to be not only considered um, and nominated to, but to actually win um, Secondary Art Educator of the Year um, among all of the other high school teachers in the state of Alabama. I believe this is my sixth year of teaching art and I have always loved art from a very young age and um, my career took me in other different places, but I kind of felt like the gifts that were given to me were not really being used. Um, I love working with people and like students, um, particularly the high school age. And um, it's a really cool thing when you can put a job with a passion and make it into a career. 
Um, like I said, I've always loved art at a young age. Um, I believe I started taking lessons around the um, third grade. Um, we didn't have elementary art. Um, and then when I got to the high school level, I started taking it. And it's just something that I've always enjoyed doing. Um, something that always kind of puts me in my happy place. It's something that um, I really get to feel like I am being myself when I'm creating. So yeah, it's always, I feel like, been a part of who I am. Um, I think it's just kind of um, affirming, you know, we, we always kind of want to know that we're doing a good job, especially when it's something you're really passionate about and you really love to do. Um, it's just kind of like getting that really nice pat on the back for all of your hard work that you put in throughout the year. Once again, congratulations, Mrs. Colwell. Thank you so much for watching our last episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkville for 2020. We'll see you next year, CCHS.